Welcome to Celtic, look. Cheers, thank you. Video of you first signed in that Friday night walking down the tunnel. It absolutely started. What was going through your head at that time? Probably the same as there, don't fall over. Yeah, cut the cameras on and so I was like, don't make a fool of yourself here. Um, but no, nah, listen, it was a special moment. Um, it was one that uh, you don't know how you're going to feel until you're actually in that moment, I think. Um, but walking out, obviously, the lights and that on, it was an empty stadium as well. It's You can actually proper take it in. See my fiance as well, to my right, it was nice. The, her face was all lit up as well. So, nah, it was a real, real special moment. You grew up watching Celtic. Is there any players you grew up watching that you maybe base your game on a little bit or aspire uh, to be on? Um, I said that earlier. Obviously, I watched it most of the growing up. You watch most uh, kind of the, the football you're, the Celtic are playing, but the team that stuck out, as I said earlier, was the O three O four kind of Alan Thompson, Stan Petrovs, players like that. Obviously, prior to last year, I was a winger, so mostly I was probably watching just. I don't know, like, even Forrest probably at times, like, just, obviously he's not like, even that much older than us, but just watching him, seeing how successful he is and how successful he's been and kind of tips and tricks, if you want to say, like, how good a player he can be. So I just think most of the Celtic players you're watching, obviously, just being for here, you're kind of trying to learn off of in every team. So. And you're on the wrong end of the scoreline uh, one night here. Seven when it finished. That was a nice. That was a nice no. Looking forward to being another team. That's the first thing I said when I actually walked out that the doors down there, and I was stepped onto the pitch. I said, "Feels nice that I'm not going to come here and get th- dumped off from <laughs> seven one or six one or whatever it was." Um, but no, listen, I think that just shows the quality that you're up against when you're in this league. Um, I knew that before I played Celtic. I knew that while playing Celtic and now that I'm at Celtic I think it's about keeping that up because you don't want to let any team off with, with anything because you know how how kind of competitive the league can be at times so you just want to keep pushing and keep pushing. And look, is a player attracting interest on deadline day, multiple clubs interested in you, could you talk us through how the day went for you and when you knew where you were going etc? I think it's just the same as I, like when, uh, probably like I don't know, maybe half nine, nine o'clock at night. Um, I was lucky enough actually in my friends who stays in Falkirk, I was just done seeing him uh, and was able to kind of just have a phone call. Can you come, can, I, can you get to Celtic Park quickly? Lucky I actually had some nice, <laughs> well, nice, nice outfit on. Uh, then I show up just in a pair of, tra- pair of trackies and a t-shirt. Um, and then that was it, there wasn't anything to it. I trained that morning in Dundee was fully prepared to um, kind of go to go and place at Mun that that next day, um, and yeah, as I said, I wasn't really focused on the, all the outside noise because nothing happens until it's you're signing a dotted line or you're in the stadium, kind of ready to do it. So I knew to kind of keep a calm head and and see where it took me. Can I ask you about noise of the night when you, you lost seven one? That was a noisy night at Celtic Park, but then you made your debut for Celtic against the Rangers. Mm-hmm. Can you compare the noise in both those games? <laughs> I was can imagine that because the one on Sunday was a lot louder, a lot, uh, a lot better. I like how you just keep reminding me I get beat six <laughs> one here. I know, thanks. Uh, <laughs> but no, listen, the noise was incredible on Sunday. Uh, I think we all know it's probably definitely the the best so far this season, and probably be hard to beat now. Uh, when you hear a noise like that, but it's days and nights like that you want to be involved in here and parading on the pitch was, was something really special and I'll kind of take that with me for for his motivation now. Well, I reflect back on last season, look, um, you obviously played Celtic four times, I think in each of those four games you played 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Can you pinpoint kind of one attribute or quality that makes a Celtic team tick and be so successful? I think they just don't stop, man. I think it's just the case of obviously a lot of time I was up against like Matt O'Reilly who obviously as you can see he's went and done really well for himself and I think every time I was up against him it was just about decisions on the ball like there wasn't a certain one I think that's the beauty of this place and this team is every single aspect of the game is just strength after strength after strength it's for the keeps right through to the striker, everyone and work as hard as ever and I think as well as probably if I wanted to say one it would be the off the ball pressure. When we so when I was against him, 
you would feel you had three, four, five guys running you at certain times. I think that's, and even when I went in and trained this week, that is a massive message. So just about kind of buying into that now and, and kind of not giving other teams a, a chance to pass or make plays or whatever. And the international breaks just come and go in there for Scotland again. Mm -hmm. Obviously, signing for Celtic, if you play games, it's Steve Clark's going to be watching you. Aye. So was that a, an aspiration for yourself this season to possibly get a Scotland cap or be in the Scotland squad Aye. for the Nations? League? I think so, aye. I mean... Obviously, you've got to be playing minutes. You've got to be showing that you're good enough to get a Scotland call up. And hopefully, if I do get minutes, then it it will come along. But I'm sure it'll just be done. I need to be working hard. I need to be showing that I'm a Scotland player. I need to be firstly showing that I'm a Celtic player and good enough to be getting the minutes and good enough to be um, making things happen. So I, I'm just looking forward to it. If it happens, it happens. I'm not really focused on that. I'm more focused on making sure I get minutes here first and kind of seeing where that takes me. Champions League next week against Slovan, but it's like mm -hmm. 60,000 here. How much are you looking forward to that? Aye, boys have told me how amazing it is. I've been here myself on a couple of nights. Um, it's been it's immense. I mean, to be able to either stand in the line or, or, or be on the bench or regardless of whatever, it's a special, special place to, to kind of come and watch your football and it's Champions League nights. And I'm sure come next week it'll be as immense as ever. You said that you're a late bloomer. You said you were working early and um, trained for air. Mm -hmm. And what was a slightly different uh, journey you took? Do you think you can provide an inspiration to academy boys, young Scottish boys that can make it and play for your boys club? I think so, aye. I mean, I'd hope most of them have that aspiration, regardless of where they are. I think that's, as I said earlier, the beauty of football. It's about always having aspirations, regardless of what age you are or what kind of level you're playing at, is you always want to make it to the next step. and. I'm just hoping I can do that. I mean, I don't really think about it like that, but when you do say stuff like that, it kind of makes you realise that you could have a big impact on people's lives, especially people that maybe haven't started off as, as amazing as what, like kind of going and playing for Celtic right away or kind of playing for anybody. It's it's kind of hard work that will get you to where you want to go and that's been my kind of message through it. And uh, you, I've read that you're got a long-term friendship with Greg Taylor. Mm -hmm. Has there been anyone in the squad that you've made an instant connection with in your two weeks here so far? Uh, do you know, every, as cliche as it sounds, everybody has been amazing. Uh, obviously, me and Arnie, like Engels, who's joined uh, newly as well, get really along well, just by kind of two as we're here until about three in the morning. Um, and I, we just got kind of got to know each other well, and obviously and then we both don't know where anything is, so we're just following each other about. Um, but I, I, all the boys have been immense, and I think you just can tell that even out in the pitch, warming up, whatever it is, going on the pitch, you can tell the camaraderie. The boys are are really are really strong. And then finally, from me, we're playing Hearts the weekend. You've already played in the season, got a goal and assist. What are you expecting from that game? It's hard. A game is always. It's Hearts are a are a big club, and they they know they're obviously in European football as well. They kind of know how hard it can be to go for European football to uh, domestic games and. I think it's a game out there that we know if we work hard and we prepare right and do all the usual kind of stuff that Celtic do, it's, uh, we want to try and get the points and, and kind of go from that. Look, your journey to becoming a Celtic player is a great example for young players. What advice would you give to players that maybe don't make that breakthrough early on in their career to get to where they want to be? Um, <laughs> stick in, generally, is, is the best advice I think I got was when I was travelling, me and my friend who doesn't play football anymore, he travelled with me to her and he chucked it because of the travel and I was just, my dad and my family, uh, my fiance now would tell me just stick in, like you don't know where it's going to get you and <laughs> obviously now they're like, ah, it was just, it's just got you there and whatever, Take, try to steal a bit of credit but nah, that's kind of the message is I think stick in and don't be thinking that football's gets you too low and that, that you can aspire to get better things than what you're at. And we often talk about midfield players these days as sixes or eights or tens. What role is a role in midfield that you prefer? No, as long as I'm playing, I think. <laughs> uh, no, listen, I, I'm happy to do any of them. Uh, as I said there, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new to this position. I would say when I was growing up, probably played ten, played white, just ten and winger. But Obviously, the last year you're kind of playing sometimes six. You're playing as two sixes. You're playing as two eights. You're playing as a ten. You're kind of just developing your game through. It. And I think coming here as well, and regardless of what position I'm asked to play, I'm sure 
the coaches will coach me on it, how to play it, and I'll kind of hopefully develop as a player again. How's it been so far getting to work with a manager like Brendan Rodgers? It's, uh, it's, been, it's been special. I think the first meeting we sat in uh, was a bit surreal. I got somehow a seat right at the front as well, and I was a bit kind of taken back at what was happening. Um, but no, he's been absolutely amazing since I've been here. He's um, just told, really, really complimented me and I think gave me a lot of confidence on don't, as I said there, don't come here and don't, you want to play, you want to kind of make a st statement that you want to come in and challenge for places and he's he's even said that so he just gave me a lot of confidence and kind of ready to run through a brick wall for him already so he's, that's when you know it's a good manager. You talked about obviously having to adapt to the football inside, could you talk us a bit about what you're doing to kind of adapt to the mental side of playing for Celtic? Well, I, I already kind of, as I said earlier, I, worked, I work a lot on that. Um, I've got a, a mindset coach, uh, JJ, who's absolutely brilliant. And um, I think working with him for the past year and then working for him for now, it was all mental preparation on how to get to this point on what happens if this happens, what goes on in your head, like how to prepare, how to... But then simplifying it all the way, it's just football at the end of the day, as long as it's, even though it is different, You'll learn each day, you'll get to meet new people that will show you different ways, you'll get to meet new people that will help you develop, as I was saying, and I think that's the main thing he does for me, is uh, takes away the noise and just tells me how simple it can be. So that's what I've been working on.